Okay, uh, we're going to talk about the second group of uh, data mining methods now, uh, informative, uh, starting with clustering. Uh, okay, as the name implies, uh, it's a data mining technique that creates uh, clusters or groups of uh, uh, records, you know, uh, so that uh, within each group, uh, the records are very similar, but uh, between uh, groups, uh, data are very different, okay, or uh, as uh, much uh, different as possible. Um, and there are uh, many methods that we can use to perform a clustering, um, including uh, statistical uh, as well as uh, artificial um, um, methods or models. Okay, uh, we won't get into detail here, but uh, the idea is that uh, on this uh, next slide, it shows, uh, for instance, uh, based on uh, income and age, uh, based on those two factors, we can produce uh, four uh, clusters of customers, okay, uh, depending on the level of um, uh, income and as well as the uh, the level uh, or the uh, how old they are, okay. So we have four uh, distinct uh, groups of customers, and then we can uh, design different uh, marketing strategies uh, for different uh, groups of customers. Uh, so it's kind of like a customer profiling that uh, you, uh, some of you probably have heard about before. Uh, for instance, uh, a few years ago, uh, there was uh, a big story about how Best Buy uh, came up with uh, four uh, types of uh, uh, consumers. Uh, they even gave a name to each group, like uh, Jill versus uh, um, uh, uh, Joe versus uh, Nancy and so on. Okay, I forget the exact names, but uh, they have a name for each group and then uh, they have uh, specific uh, marketing strategies um, and, uh, uh, you know, different uh, uh, product uh, placements, uh, promotional uh, incentives and so on for different groups of uh, customers. Okay, um, as shown on the next slide, uh, Clustering uh, a lot of times uh, is used to uh, improve uh, marketing uh, strategies or marketing campaigns. Okay. Uh, second type of uh, informative uh, analysis is uh, called association analysis, uh, also known as MBA, uh, but in this case, uh, MBA stands for Market Basket Analysis. Okay. Uh, as the name implies, uh, we are trying to analyze a basket of uh, uh, products, okay, and see uh, which products are associated or related together. And as you can imagine, this is a very common uh, data mining uh, application in uh, marketing in uh, uh, retail stores, for instance. Okay, so on the next slide, uh, it shows uh, association analysis example. Um, Let's say we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D, E, uh, five different products uh, that we sell, uh, and then we have a bunch of customers who have purchased that uh, in the past, right? Uh, so we analyze their purchase data, okay? So each purchase uh, or each invoice, uh, each receipt or each uh, market basket, okay, they are all the same thing, basically. Uh, each receipt, uh, uh, contains several items, right? So we analyze those items to see uh, the, uh, the relationships among them and try to identify uh, which items uh, normally purchase together. Okay. So for instance, uh, at the top of top right of the screen, uh, it says uh, you know cross-selling rules. Uh, you know one of them is that uh, one rule that we uh, uncovered was, you know, in the past, a lot of people purchased um, item C, which is beer, uh, also purchased uh, uh, diapers, okay, item D. Now, don't ask me why, but uh, this actually uh, is a, uh, a legend in data mining uh, industry. Uh, uh, the exact reasons uh, why this happened uh, were really unknown, okay. Uh, and probably uh, not important either, okay? Because the idea is that we want to identify items that you know uh, normally don't appear to uh, to sell together. And uh, uh, in that case, uh, we have uh, you know uncovered something that is uh, strategy that is uh, um, 
very unusual that is uh, uh, of value to uh, to our business. Okay, that you know our competitors do not know about this uh, association. So that's the value of uh, data mining. Okay, uh, and then uh, of course uh, if if we indeed have such a rule, then we probably do uh, cross-selling or uh, promotional uh, uh, activities. So next time uh, when a, a guy comes in and grabs some beer, uh, we'll print out some uh, coupons for diaper for him, right? So now you know uh, why uh, you get some uh, coupons uh, when you shop at a geolocal uh, grocery store for certain items, okay? So that's uh, association analysis. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about some detail uh, related to association analysis. I mean, uh, we can treat this as a uh, black box and just uh, let the computer uh, produce those rules, okay? Like, uh, you know, diapers and beer have a high uh, correlation, for instance, okay? Um, to me, that's fine, but uh, you'd be better if we understand the um, uh, the mechanism behind uh, the, uh, those rules so that we can make a uh, better uh, judgment ourselves, okay? So I'm going to explain uh, the next slide in more detail and hopefully uh, uh, it will help you understand uh, all the magic behind uh, those uh, uh, association rules, okay? Uh, we're going to use a simple example uh, with uh, five transactions or five uh, invoices or five receipts, okay? Uh, at a computer store, okay? So on each receipt, you see uh, certain items are recorded, okay? Uh, and again, we have five receipts or five um, market baskets. Then at the bottom of the screen, we have a table that shows uh, we have two products we're trying to analyze, okay? The leading product is laptop, and the depending product is uh, laptop bag, okay? So in other words, uh, we're trying to find out uh, do we have a high uh, correlation between uh, laptop and laptop bag? Okay. Now, uh, one of the uh, major measures that uh, we can calculate is called the support for this uh, uh, hypothesis. Okay. Um, the support uh, is calculated uh, simply as the number of times that those two products are sold together. Okay, so uh, you look at those five uh, invoices and you count the number of times that laptop and laptop bag appear together. Okay, so you count how many times do we have a laptop and laptop bag on a single receipt. Okay, and if you can identify there are two receipts and out of a total of five, then we have a 40% of support of the two products uh, being purchased uh, together, okay? So that's how you get support, which is one measure or one indication of, you know, how well these two products um, may sell together, okay? So should we spend, you know, uh, more time and efforts trying to promote these two products together? 40%, uh, well, some people may consider that uh, is a good uh, probability, others, um, not so much, okay. Uh, but you may also notice that a um, lot of times, uh, you know, people don't buy a laptop at all when they come to the store, right? So when we calculate support, uh, we kind of can we kind of uh, penalize the uh, the probability because we include all those invoices that do not have a laptop uh, appeared, okay. So confidence. Uh, uh, is the second measure that we can calculate, which then use only those invoices that have a laptop uh, as part of the items, okay? In other words, uh, we're trying to identify uh, those instances when a laptop is purchased, and if we have that information, then what is the probability of uh, the person also uh, is buying a laptop bag? Okay, so this is basically a uh, posterior probability. If we know uh, something happens, then what's the probability of uh, uh, something else will happen, okay? 
again, uh, if we know somebody has bought uh, a laptop, then what is the likelihood or probability that he or she will buy a uh, laptop bag? Uh, uh, laptop bag, yes. Okay. So in other words, uh, we exclude uh, those invoices that do not have laptop uh, at all. Okay. So in this case, our denominator becomes uh, only three. Okay. So so now our uh, probability is two out of three, which is sixty-six percent. So now you see we are more confident that uh, those two products probably go uh, well together, right? Uh, we have more than 50% of uh, probability, okay? So that's the second measure. Now, the third measure is called lift, okay? Uh, lift uh, is also a ratio, okay? Uh, but lift is uh, the ratio between confidence and the probability of the uh, dependent product would uh, would be purchased alone. Okay. In other words, uh, we are trying to determine uh, how much more uh, probable that uh, a customer will purchase a laptop bag if he or she had purchased a laptop before. Okay. So that's the lift or additional probability we will get if we knew that uh, somebody has already purchased uh, a laptop. Okay. So again, uh, the ratio is between uh, confidence. So uh, you might want to write this down. So uh, the uh, numerator is uh, 2 out of 3, right? And the denominator is the uh, probability of a laptop bag itself uh, is being purchased. Okay, so for that, you would just count uh, how many times uh, does laptop bag appear uh, in the invoice. Okay, again, look at how many times the laptop bag appears. Um, well, according to my uh, observation, that's three times out of five invoices, right? I mean, don't worry about uh, any other items, just look at a laptop bag. Uh, it appears three times out of five, so the denominator is three over five, and the numerator is uh, two over three. All right, and then uh, and then you can calculate the result. Uh, it it is uh, essentially uh, ten over nine, or one hundred eleven percent. Okay, so uh, that tells you that uh, it is uh, additional uh, probability will be added by knowing that the person has purchased uh, a laptop. Okay, so we have a nice lift uh, in this case, so we, uh, we are even more confident that uh, the two, two products are really go together. Okay, um, and again, uh, lift is a ratio, okay, uh, so the ratio between uh, two numbers, uh, the numerator is, you know, the uh, probability that uh, the uh, dependent product will be purchased if we knew that the, the leading product was purchased. Okay, and the uh, denominator is the probability of the, lead, uh, the dependent product will be purchased. So, the uh, ratio between two numbers and, and the result can be either uh, greater than one in this, uh, as shown in this example, or uh, the result can be uh, less than one. Okay. If it's less than one, then that means that uh, knowing the leading product was purchased uh, did not help at all. Uh, the uh, did not increase the probability of uh, the dependent product will be purchased. Okay, so there's no lift at all. Therefore, uh, we don't want the two products to be uh, promoted together. Okay, in other words, uh, we try to look at. Uh, a lift number that is uh, at least uh, over, uh, at least uh, greater than one. Okay, and uh, the higher the better, because you get uh, more probability if we know that uh, one product was purchased uh, for the second product. Okay.